Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We are heard right here on the Impact Lounge. Slam Aversary is in the books, and good gosh, what a show. Lots of surprises. What a show. Absolutely loved it. Just, just wow. Just, just absolutely wow. For, for anyone that's been saying uh, in the past, uh, within the past, um, a few months that Impact Wrestling is one nail in the coffin away from 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 folding. You could just go to hell, man. You could just go to hell because Impact Wrestling absolutely delivered at Slamversary. They said there were going to be surprises. We got surprises. We got fantastic matches. Impact Wrestling, unbelievable, unbelievable. What a show! And uh, let's uh, let's get into it, man. I, um, that and the ending of the show, the ending um, with EC3. I was I when the Good Brothers came out and uh, they aligned themselves with with uh, Eddie Edwards and they took out um, Madman Fulton and Ace uh, Austin. I thought that was the end of the show. They're, they're drinking the beer. They're drinking the beer with Eddie Edwards. And I was like, oh, okay. I figured no EC3. That's okay. But then you see EC3 symbol. EC3 shows up. And I'm like, holy crap. It was like a 20-second video of EC3 um, returning to uh, Impact Wrestling. It wasn't in. He, did, he was just a video that he filmed. But still, it just it was just phenomenal. All the, all the buildup over the last... A few months uh, since he's been released from the WWE with this uh, with the new control your narrative character, just months and months of build up and where's he gonna go and and he's he's back in EC he's back in uh, Impact Wrestling, just just incredible incredible stuff and we saw the return of Eric Young, of course the Good Brothers, um, and we saw the return of the Motor City Machine Guns. They uh, answered the open challenge to the Rascals. Just a just a terrific show. Just a terrific show. Just uh, you know, it, it ended like it ended about an hour ago, and I'm still reeling from it, man. I'm still reeling from it. It's just just a terrific show. Let's let's run down the let's run down the card, and I'll uh, talk about the 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 matches for a bit, and then uh, of course uh, a few other things I want to talk about. So possibly some dumb comments, <laughs> but uh, because. Uh, as great as the show was, I still found a few dumb comments. I found like two of them, and uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go over them. But let's let's go let's go over the matches. Uh, opening match, of course, uh, the Rascals had their open challenge, and uh, I knew I knew it, w- it wasn't gonna be the Good Brothers, and I, I was I picked the Motor City Machine Guns or uh, Heath Slater and Rhino, and it was the Motor City Machine Guns. Alex Shelley, Chris Saban returned to Impact Wrestling, and and it w- just a terrific opening match. Just a terrific, terrific opening match. Good to see the Motor City Machine Guns back, and uh, they get the win over the Rascals. But just, just an outstanding opening. Just the type of opening match that you want uh, for the show. It was a terrific surprise uh, to see the Motor City Machine Guns, and uh, it was a terrific match to open the show. You know, great surprise, great match. You can't beat that. You can't beat that to to open Slammiversary. And uh, I was excited. I was excited to see them, to see them back. And you know, now with the Good Brothers on hand, and uh, now the Motor City Machine Guns, and now you got you two new tag teams in Impact Wrestling. The tag team division is really starting to shape up now. I still think they should go after a few younger tag teams, um, but um, great stuff, great stuff in the opening match. And then uh, you had Moose against Tommy Dreamer. I, I'll, I'll admit, I'll admit, this was the one match that I um, I could have done without. This is the one match on the show that I could have. I if they if this match wasn't wasn't uh, if you took this match away from the from the show, I I would have been fine. I would have been fine. It, it it was okay. It was okay. I I thought um, I thought uh, we were gonna have another surprise here. I thought Moose was gonna win rather easily, and then he was gonna. Say that he's the greatest TNA champion of all time, and somebody was going to show up, and but that didn't happen. It was just a match, and uh, old school rules, hardcore match. It was unsanctioned. Uh, the only thing I did like, I did like Tommy Dreamer's uh, tribute to uh, Terry Funk 
wearing the Moose Sucks Eggs shirt. Um, in reference to uh, Terry Funk, who used to wear Dusty Sucks Eggs, you know, Dusty Rhodes, when they had their feud back in the uh, late 70s, he would wear that shirt, which I thought that was, uh, that, that was um, a nice little touch by Tommy Dreamer. Uh, but other than that, the match, was, the match was okay, Moose. There were a few times... During the match, where I got a little nervous because I thought Tommy Dream was gonna, Tommy Dream was gonna pull it out, and I thought that would have been absolutely ridiculous. But uh, no, Moose Moose wins the match, and uh, he still remains uh, the TNA World uh, Heavyweight Champion. And uh, I was expecting, I was expecting, um, well, I, 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 was, I was expecting EC3 to show up in this one. But when it was the second match, I kind of figured, well, it's the second match, EC3. It's a huge surprise. He's someone that would would close the show. So when this was the second match, I figured uh, we're not going to see EC3, and I was right. Just 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 match Moose beats Tommy Dreamer, and um, that was that. And then uh, we go to Kylie Ray uh, winning the gauntlet for the gold match. So uh, it was Kylie Ray. Uh, there was um, quite a few. Uh, Knockouts in the in this match, uh, I'm not going to name all of them, uh, but Kylie Ray won by eliminating uh, Taya Valkyrie. Uh, Katie Forbes was in the match. Uh, one of my favorite moments in the match is um, well, two of my favorite moments is Katie Forbes and and Kiera Hogan. You know they were twerking together. They were doing they were doing a little dance together, and and uh, when Jessica Havoc music hit, and uh, she's making her way, and her music is playing. And, Katie Forbes is just like in the corner t- twerking. <laughs> She's twerking to Jessica Havoc's music. I thought that was hilarious. You, you had a, you had a, you had, it was quick. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't, you had to, it was, you had to keep your mind it quickly because it, it was real fast. It was, she was like in the corner, the bottom of the corner of the screen, and the music's playing and she's twerking to, uh, to, um, Jessica Havoc's, Havoc's music. I thought that was I thought that was a uh, hilarious, uh, but it was a good match, a nice exciting match. I could have done without. I could have done without Johnny Bravo dressed up as uh, both Ty Valkyrie and Rosemary. I know BQ liked that not like that segment. He thought it was funny. I I could have done without it. I didn't think they needed to add any uh, comedy relief to this match. Uh, but Kylie Ray, the right person. I, th- I thought it was going to be Kylie Ray or, or Kira Hogan, uh, but uh, Kylie Ray wins, and now she's the number one contender uh, for the Impact Knockouts Championship. Good call there, Kylie Ray. Very, very talented wrestler, and uh, it's good to see. Uh, it's good to see her win that and become the number one contender. Then we had Chris Bay uh, challenging Willie Mack for the X Division Championship. Now this was another very, very good match. I really enjoyed this match. Uh, good action, good back and forth action. I I thought there was the, there was no way in hell that that uh, Willie Mack was going to lose. I didn't think um, they were going to put the belt on Chris Bay just yet, but I was wrong. Chris Bay defeats Willie Mack and becomes the new X Division champion, which is quite interesting because it was totally unexpected. I I sent text message to to BQ because we were messi- messaging each other back and forth, and we were both shocked. We were both shocked that. Uh, that Chris Bay uh, defeated Willie Mack to become the X Division champion, uh, but you know, Chris Bay is a very, very talented wrestler. Very, very talented wrestler, and uh, he, um, I think he's going to do a good job. I think he's going to he's going to do a good job as the X Division champion. And this is where I think they should bring in some some young talent to work with uh, Chris Bay, like 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 an Aiden Prince or a, or a El Reverso. Or Kevin Bennett or Daniel Garcia, uh, just just some young talent to come in and work with with Chris Bay, and and another another reason why I thought that uh, Chris Bay wasn't going to win this match because with the whole Johnny Swinger thing, uh, when Johnny Swinger overheard Chris Bay um, saying that he's using Johnny Swinger and Johnny Swinger decided that he wasn't going to be in in the corner of Chris Bay that Chris Bay was on his own, I thought then okay this, he's going to be on his own there's there's no way that that was an indication to me that that Chris Bay um, wasn't going to win this match but but i was wrong i was wrong uh as we all know as i think a lot of people are you know, but uh, chris bay your new x division champion then we have the north ethan page josh alexander defending 
the Impact Tag Team titles against Ken Shamrock, Sammy Callahan. I absolutely loved this match. The, the North could wrestle anybody. The, any, the North could make any match a fantastic match. And not taking anything away from Ken Shamrock or Sammy Callahan. Uh, they're, they're tremendous talents. And uh, they worked really well together. There was little dissension between the two. I thought it was going to be a full-blown breakup between the two. Uh, but there's just a little dissension uh, between the two. But uh, great, great action in this match. Lots of um, close, close calls. A lot of near falls in this match, I should say. And uh, I there Again, times where I thought Shamrock and Call- Callahan were going to pull it out. Uh, but uh, my prediction rang true. I predict the North was going to remain uh, the tag team champions, and they did. Uh, but it was a tremendous match. Just a tremendous match. Um, what can I say, man? What can I say? Uh, Ethan Page, Josh Alexander, one of the absolute best tag teams in the world. And after the match, they get on the mic. And they start, um, you know, praising themselves and saying that they um, that they're the best. And I don't remember what they were saying word for word. Uh, but uh, at this point, that's where I thought the Good Brothers were going to come out, and we were going to have the showdown or the stare down that I was really hoping for. Um, I really wanted Ethan Page, Josh Alexander, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson in the ring together, but. Motor City Machine Guns came out instead, and we find out on Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday, it's going to be the North defending the Impact Tag Team Championship against the Motor City Machine Guns. That is going to be a absolutely epic, epic match. I know Josh Alexander, when I when I had him on my show, one of his uh, matches that he wanted was against the Motor City Machine Guns, and uh, that's happening this Tuesday. And I absolutely cannot wait for that one. That's going to be just a fantastic match. And I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if the Motor City Machine Guns actually win uh, the Impact uh, Tag Team titles. Uh, but on the flip side, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the North successfully defends uh, the Impact World Tag Team Titles against the Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, it could go either way. It could go either way. But but whichever way it goes, we're going to get an absolutely tremendous, tremendous match between both teams. And one thing I forgot to mention, I'm gonna before I get into the, the, the main event, one thing I forgot to mention is Heath, uh, Heath Slater made his debut. Uh, it was after the, the gauntlet match um, for the number one contender, the knockouts number one contender to gauntlet match. And uh, he got into it with Rohit Raju, and uh, he took out Rohit Raju. So they basically jobbed Rohit Raju out again, which which kind of uh, irritated me. But but Heath Slater, uh, making his debut, for Impact Wrestling, is wearing a shirt that said "Free Agent." Uh, then uh, after he took out uh, Rohit Raju, went to the back and he reunited with Rhino. They hugged, and then Scott Demore came in and said, uh, "You're a free agent." Uh, because of COVID-19, you're not supposed to be in the building. And he basically threw out Heath Slater, which was a little strange, you know, because, uh, like, if he's not supposed to be in the building, you know, how, how did he get into the building and into the ring um, to take out Rohit Raju? And why why would people, why why would Scott Demore wait to see him backstage to ask him to leave? Why wouldn't they uh, send security to the ring to get rid of him? I thought that was a little strange. I thought that was a little weird. Uh, that they did that, but um, I I don't know if he's officially signed with uh, with Impact Wrestling, but I know uh, you know Rhino did say show up on Tuesday, and um, he'll I, I think he's going to help him get signed uh, to Impact Wrestling. Uh, but uh, no, that's uh, great with Rhino and uh, Heath Slater reunited um, on at Slammiversary, so that was another uh, little nice touch. And then we had the main event, uh, which uh, was uh, initially Eddie Edwards against Ace Austin, Trey Miguel, and a mystery fourth opponent. Uh, now that mystery fourth opponent turned out to be uh, Rich Swan, and I will I will say I was initially disappointed because I'm expecting uh, EC3, Eric Young, Bully Ray uh, to be uh, that fourth mystery opponent. And when Rich Swan came out, I was uh, disappointed, and I um, made my disappointment uh, <laughs> apparent uh, to um, 
to uh, to BQ. I sent him a uh, sent him a, a text message uh, to let him know how disappointed I was that uh, that the mystery opponent is Rich Swan. Uh, but my disappointment turned into uh, excitement uh, rather quickly when when we find out that it's that Eric Young is is the fifth mystery opponent. Um, in this match, so we have a fifth uh, fifth person in this match. Uh, Eric Young comes out, and uh, thank goodness, thank goodness, he was not Super Eric. Uh, he was um, his uh, insane Eric Young character, which uh, which I absolutely love. And um, I thought I thought he was going to win the match, but uh, we all know now that Eddie Edwards uh, is the new Impact World Champion. He uh, wins that match, but uh, Eric Young uh, took out uh, Rich Swan, um, re-injured his leg, and uh, even though um, you know Rich Swan um, eliminated Eric Young, uh, this this was an eliminated a five a fatal five way elimination match. Um, Eric Young actually eliminated Trey uh, Miguel, and then Rich Swan. Eliminated Eric Young, but then Eric Young just absolutely took out Rich Swan and re-injured his leg and just absolutely brutalized Rich Swan and and um, I just I, I absolutely loved it. You know the the crazy Eric Young is back and um, in in Impact Wrestling and I, I I thought it was tremendous and I thought I then I then I'm thinking Rich Swan is going to uh, you know overcome the odds of having a hurt leg and and he, he was going to win uh, the Impact World Championship but that wasn't the case uh, as we know Ace Austin uh, eliminated Rich Swan then Eddie Edwards eliminated Ace Austin and became the new Impact uh, World Championship this was a great match lots of lots of great action in this match I really really enjoyed this match loved uh, the return of of Eric Young and um Rich Swan is back as well, but I don't know if uh, if now uh, because of that injury he's going to be out for a while. But it kind of sets up a feud now between Eric Young and Rich Swan, uh, which should be interesting. Uh, but uh, after the match was over, Eddie Edwards is is uh, he's celebrating. Ace Austin, I'm sorry, Madman Fulton comes out, attacks uh, Eddie Edwards. Uh, Austin and uh, Madman Fulton are going to team up on Edwards. Uh, the Good Brothers come out. And uh, actually, I don't know if they. I, I I don't think they attack. I don't think they attacked Eddie Edwards. No, they did. They did. They did attack Eddie Edwards. Uh, and then the Good Brothers came out and um, made the save. And they aligned themselves with uh, Eddie Edwards. They took out Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. And I I thought they were going to take out Eddie Edwards as well. And I thought maybe Bully Ray would come out or something. <clears throat> but uh, no, that wasn't the case. They aligned themselves with Eddie Edwards. They uh, they drank a beer. They popped open a beer and they 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 celebrated uh, with beer uh, at the end of the show. And I thought, okay, that's it. No EC three. You know, I it's okay. I I was um, really hoping that we would see EC three. And as Josh Matthews is saying his goodbye, I'm about to. I'm about to get up and walk away, thinking the show's over, and boom, there it is. There's the EC3 symbol, and EC3 is back in in Impact Wrestling. Uh, he wasn't uh, he wasn't at on actually in the um, in the studio. He was uh, it was a video that they showed of EC3 right at the end. Uh, EC3 takes the hood off and reveals that he was the person in the chair all along, and. Um, EC3 back in Impact Wrestling. So let's let's think. Let's talk about who's back now. It's EC3, Eric Young, and the Good Brothers are now in uh, Impact Wrestling, and the Motor City Machine Guns. So lots of surprises, and lots of great great talent back in in um, Impact Wrestling. Great time to be an Impact Wrestling fan. I can't wait for Tuesday. I can't wait to see. Uh, I can't wait to see more EC3 videos, and I can't wait for him to uh, finally make his his return uh, in an official Impact Wrestling match. And I'm thinking he's going to go after Eddie Edwards. I think that'll be the the first feud, EC3 and Eddie Edwards for the Impact uh, World Championship. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Or he could go after Moose, but I think I think he's going to go after Eddie Edwards, and he's going to. Um, 
try to get that Impact World title around his waist. Uh, and they, there'll be some incredible matches between uh, EC3 and, and Eddie Edwards if that is, in fact, what uh, they're going to be doing. And uh, I, I want to apologize, uh, though, because I don't know if anyone notices or not, but I have my nose a little stuffed up right now. So if, if you're having a little hard time understanding my words i'm having a little trouble getting them out just because i got a little bit of a stuffed up nose so i i i apologize for that um uh, <clears throat> a little bit of a a tickle in my throat as well uh so um but but let's move along let's move along you know i, I want to talk um off slammiversary uh for a bit i want to talk about um the streaming of Slammiversary. Uh, so not really getting off Slammiversary, but the streaming of Slammiversary. I noticed on, on social media there are a lot of people asking for, for links uh, to, to Slammiversary. Uh, illegal links. And I, there are people that, that will post. You know, I think there's one called Watch Wrestling. I, I know that people post. And uh, another guy was, was posting streams, a uh, streaming site that you go on and, and watch for free. I, I have an issue with that. I have an issue with that because to me, that's that's stealing. That's stealing. You could you could call it what you want. You call it, but to me, I call it stealing. Um, if you're not going to support Impact Wrestling, if you're an Impact Wrestling fan, but but you don't want to support Impact Wrestling by paying uh, for a pay per view, and you want to go and stream it on a site uh, for free, that's that's stealing. That's stealing, and I, and a lot of people. I I I've called a couple of people out on that in the past, and they get a little touchy about it. You know, some people might. Some people have actually said to me, uh, "Well, I I am a little short money. I I can't afford the the forty dollars for the pay per view, and that's fine. I understand it. I understand that. I've struggled financially. I've struggled financially um, for a long time, um, but I didn't resort to stealing. Uh, to 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 get things that I needed. For example, like for for, for example, say I'm I'm going to uh, uh, to the um, to the uh, grocery store, you know, and I, I don't have that much money, and I'm going to buy myself some hot dogs. You know, this is actually a true story. This is actually a true story. Okay, a long time ago, I was living in San Francisco and trying to become a stand-up comic, and um, the whole my my past life. But uh, I, I had very little money. I had very little money. I was just barely making rent. And uh, I was at the grocery store. And I bought some hot dogs. And I bought um, buns. And uh, I wanted mustard and sauerkraut. Because that's how I, I like my hot dogs. With mustard and sauerkraut. But I didn't have enough money. I didn't have, much, I didn't have the money to, to buy mustard and sauerkraut. I could only get either mustard or sauerkraut. So I had to choose one or the other. And just because I wasn't able to afford... I wasn't able to afford one of them doesn't give me didn't give me the right to actually take to take a jar of mustard or a jar of sauerkraut and stick it in my pocket and steal it didn't give me the right because you know why because stealing's illegal okay that didn't give me the right to steal one of them I had to put one back so I I actually chose the mustard over the sauerkraut I think that was a wise choice by the way <laughs> but I uh, I chose the mustard um, but the point I'm trying to make is this is the same thing. You don't have the money. I understand. Um, I I fully understand that. But it doesn't give you the right to go onto an illegal website and steal Slammiversary and watch it for free. If you can't watch it, you can't afford it. Don't watch it. I, there, you know, there are times where I want to watch a pay per view, but I can't afford it. You know, so what do I do? I don't buy it, and the next day I read the results. And I'll see if I'll, I'll go on YouTube if I can see if there's a clip or two on there, uh, some highlights. I'll watch the highlights. Uh, but I'm not going on on these illegal streaming sites to watch it for free. I, I don't I don't believe in doing that. I think it's wrong, and I, I just want to, I just want to voice my opinion on that. Okay, I just want to voice my opinion on that. Now let's get on to uh, you know since you know, Slamiversary was such a great show, I thought maybe we would be we would be um, dumb comment free. For Slammiversary, but I was wrong. I was wrong. So there are a couple of people uh, making some dumb comments about Slammiversary, and I'm going to discuss them now. Let's uh, let's discuss these dumb comments. Dumb comment number one. I, I got two of them. Dumb comment number one. 
they uh, they put up a um, Impact Wrestling put up a um, a graphic that said and new exhibition champion Chris Bay, and so some guy says and this is why TNA Impact sucks. What's wrong with Willie Mack having the belt? So give it to a loser. <laughs> the only loser here is this person, you know, putting this comment up on um, on the Impact Wrestling Facebook page. Okay, he's the only loser. Because think of it, think of it. You know, this is why T. First of all, it's not TNA Impact; it's Impact. Uh, this, but this is why it sucked because it was a title change. That's basically what it's saying. That's basically what it's saying. Oh, Impact Wrestling sucks because there was a title change that uh, that I didn't want. So Impact Wrestling sucks. This is why Impact Wrestling sucks. You know, because why why can't Willie Mack have the belt? You know, why okay why Willie Mack why how okay why uh, how come Ace Austin can't have the belt? Oh, so how come Trey Miguel can't have the belt? How come who else? How come I don't know? How come Abyss can't come back into Impact Wrestling and, and become the X Division Champion? You know why? Because Scott Demore and, and Don Callis they're making the decisions. Okay, they're making the decisions on who's a champion and who's losing the title and who's uh, who's who's keeping the title. You know, Willie Mack was champion for a bit. His time is up. And now Chris Bay is a champion, uh, but just because there's a title change doesn't mean Impact Wrestling sucks. Okay, doesn't mean Impact Wrestling sucks. Don't make stupid comments. Now I even responded. I said, "What an ass nine comment!" And actually, uh, Justin Pitts, uh, Justin Pitts, I'll say his name. He um, he actually he actually responded by saying that he can't wait to hear me tear up this comment uh, on uh, shooting up north, which I'm doing right now, just for Justin Pitts. Uh, so I. <laughs> So there you go, Justin Pitts. I'm tearing up this comment just for you. But, uh, but it was just a completely asinine comment to make uh, that um, that uh, TNA that that TNA sucks because uh, Willie Mac lost the belt. I guess he didn't watch Slammiversary. I guess he didn't watch any of uh, Slammiversary. He's just um, he's just he just he just saw uh, one result. He goes, "Oh, that's uh, TNA sucks. Why can't Willie Mack have the belt?" So I'm going to I'm going to put up this comment here like uh, like an ass. <laughs> like the ass that I am. Uh, but anyway, so um, I just want to uh, take care of that and there was another another comment. I just have to find it. Oh yeah, they were talking about, you know, Slammiversary is in the books. You know, Slamver, the Impact Wrestling posted about uh, Slammiversary being in the books and, and that it was, a, it was a great show, which it was. And then somebody responds, Oh, if your show was only on a channel that people could actually watch, uh, SMH, shake my head. Uh, dude, first of all, first of all, Access TV is available to 50 million people. Okay? It's available to 50 million people, 5-0. 50 million people have access to Access TV. And those who don't have access to Access TV can watch it on Twitch. So do me a favor and shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. A lot of people say that. A lot of people say, oh, they complain about the channel it's on. It's on a channel that reaches 50 million people. 50 million, 50 million households get Access TV. And there's Twitch. If you have a computer, you can watch Impact. Uh, you can watch Impact Wrestling. So there's no excuses not to watch Impact Wrestling. So that comment was just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. And those were really the only two comments I could find. I I I, I didn't really look go in depth. Uh, to find, but uh, those two popped up right away, so I thought I'd discuss those two right now, which I have. So, anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for joining me today on my Slammiversary edition of Shooting Up North, and I can't wait to see what the future holds now. I can't wait to see what they're going to do with EC3. I can't wait to see what they're going to do now. Eric Young, who uh, like I said, appears to be uh, will be in a few now with Rich Swan. Great time, great time, great time to be an Impact Wrestling fan, and uh, to all the uh, to all the haters out there, to all the trolls, just deal with it. Just deal with it. Impact Wrestling's here to stay. It's going nowhere. It's great. It's a tremendous promotion, and. There's absolutely nothing you trolls can do about it. And if you want to post a, uh, 
a super comment, I'm here to shoot it down. I'm here to shoot it down. And on that note, I want to thank, say thank you again for listening to me today. I am Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. And stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.